Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. I guess I'll talk about the comic book industry then a little bit. Uh, she doesn't seem to care so much about the comic book industry, even though she writes comic books. And uh, we make comic books, we publish comic books ourselves. Um, we're going to talk about this uh, interesting development with Mark Miller and Cancel Pigs. Uh, cancel Pigs are the people that have been basically trying to cancel any conservative-ish uh, YouTuber or comic book creator for the last five or six years. Uh, they've been called Cancel Pigs now by Mark Miller, who is a very prominent comic book writer slash creator. Uh, the guy has everything that they want. He's got everything they want. He's got his fat Netflix deal. Uh, he's written many well-regarded titles over the years. He's had a very uh, long and storied career in comics. He's He's got, uh, I'm assuming, fat stacks of cash you know he's he's the uh the creative mind behind uh, things such as uh, you know kick ass and kingsman and many many others and you know a lot of these people would kill for the opportunity well i shouldn't say that because people are going to accuse me of saying that they're going to kill people but they would love to have the opportunities that that mark miller has had and you know he's he's more or less stayed out of this uh drama for the last couple of years a lot of prominent comic book writers, creators, artists have stayed out of the drama, except for those that get sucked into it. And they're, they're basically uh, being told that they have to give some kind of opinion against uh, YouTubers and comic creators they don't like. The comics gate people, even if they're not actually comics gate, it's all comics gate to them. If you're critical of the mainstream comic book industry in any way, if your politics are a little too far right for them. And I'm not talking far right. I'm talking like centrist. If your centrist political takes are, are too far right for them, then chances are you've already been uh, labeled. You've already been denigrated. They've already uh, talked about you in back channel whisper networks. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about this because this does seem to be a turning point. I just personally think it's too late. This is my personal opinion. I think it's too late to salvage the uh, North American direct market, the comic book industry as we know it. I think that it has burned itself to the ground. And uh, now that we can you know, point to these people and be like, yeah, you guys have caused a lot of problems over the last five or six years. You've cost a lot of companies a lot of money over the last five or six years. But there's no way to get that back. A lot of readers have moved on. The only thing you can do at this point is kind of point at these people and be like, yep, yeah, told you so. Told you so. These were the bad guys. These were the bad guys all along. And we've been kind of chronicling this off and on for the last five or six years. In fact, it's kind of what got us into talking about pop culture and all the weird political machinations behind pop culture uh, on this channel, you know, having worked in the comic book industry. And I actually walked away from it in 2015. I'm like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not for me. There's no money in it and it's too political and I'm out. And, uh, you know, we've, we've dipped a toe back in, you know, uh, publishing our own stuff. Thank you very much. Geeky's actually working very hard on getting packages out to you guys. Uh, we had thousands of orders for comic books, Shadowbinders comics, Crimson Ren comics, uh, the previously on Clownfish TV comics. All that stuff is getting shipped out uh, currently and has been for like the last two months, three months now. There's just thousands of packages and we don't have a warehouse or anything like that. But um, anyway, yeah, we kind of noped out and then we got back into it when the situation with, with uh, Mark Wade happened with Richard C. Meyer, diversity in comics. If, if you guys remember the story, for those of you who don't remember the story, basically what happened was we had a, a YouTube critic, diversity in comics, your boy, Zach, who was too critical of the mainstream comic book industry. And he got too big for the likings of people like Heidi McDonald and so many other tertiary comic book personalities. Let's call, call them that. Cause a lot of them weren't really names or big names at the time or whatever. And, uh, you know, he was criticizing their friends and he was making fun of, you know, all the, uh, politics and the quote unquote wokeness in comics. And well, that, that ruffled a few feathers. Now, the kind of stuff he said, for the most part, I don't think was any worse than something you would hear in a comic shop. Maybe, and he even admits, maybe he took it a little too far on occasion. But any criticism was not to be tolerated because they had to control the media. They had to control the narrative. They had to control who got into comics and who stayed in comics. And you couldn't have outsiders like YouTubers come in and give hot takes. 
Uh, yada, yada, yada. Mark Wade gets involved because Mark Wade's always looking for a fight online, I guess. And Mark Wade basically goes out of his way to tank a publishing deal with Richard Meyer. And uh, he was supposed to go through, uh, I think it was Antarctic Press to publish Jawbreakers. And then he threatened to basically have anybody associated with Meyer or anybody associated with quote unquote comics gate uh, to have them blacklisted from shops. And then there was a lawsuit and I guess that lawsuit was settled. I don't know what the results of that were exactly, but I don't think Wade's talking as much about it as he used to. And I don't think Richard Meyer's allowed to talk about Wade. Uh, that's usually how settlements work. But I mean, this is has basically tossed a hand grenade into the comic book industry. And, you know, it's very, very fragmented. We have a lot of people that are hyper political activists, you know, the Portland crew. And I don't want to denigrate everybody from Portland, by the way. I know we've got some fans in Portland. Thank you very much for your support. But, you know, a lot of uh, current year politics have bled into the comic book industry. And, you know, basically, if you weren't on board with whatever the trend of the day was, if you were an old head, if you were, you know, slightly conservative, you were effectively driven out of comics by people that fancy themselves as gatekeepers. And there there is lots of documentation of who these people are. If you go out to bleedingfold.com, apparently uh, a an undercover journalist called Penny Parker uh, unearthed a treasure trove of Whisper Network people. And uh, these people were apparently talking smack about certain personalities on YouTube or outside the comic book industry, or even people in the comic book industry that they did not want in the comic book industry. And it included journalists. It included editors. It included social media personalities. It included a lot of hangers on. And they were successful uh, to a degree at, at gatekeeping the comic book industry. And as they're doing this, it keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And we're seeing the sales numbers and they're not good. And this is a very, this is very much a nickel tour, by the way. I mean, there's so much to this and we haven't really covered it in depth in a while because I personally don't care about the day-to-day -day drama. Anyway, fast forward after years of this crap and people being smeared and denigrated and losing gigs and threatened with blacklisting and all this crap because of a handful of motor mouths on social media. Well, now it's turning out that they really didn't have that much power. It was perceived power. And I think all it took was uh, Twitter blowing up for it to become very apparent that they didn't have a lot of power. A lot of these websites that these people worked for, these, these corrupt journalists and corrupt editors getting shut down, or they're being told to stick to news. Uh, a lot of shops going out of business you know, shops believing these people that things were fine in comics, that uh, people did want these really super hyper progressive comics instead of classic characters, classic stories, you know, and you can get rid of the stinky old middle aged men and comics will still be fine. And look, it can be argued successfully that comics as an art form are fine. Manga is doing fine. Graphic novels are doing fine. Webtoon seems to be doing very fine. But the direct market the Cape, the Cape comics, that, that, that market is not doing well. And a lot of people just left on their own. They're like, you know what? I'm not going to play these games. I'm out of here. I'm going to go work in movies. I'm going to go work, you know, video games or something. I'm going to go do something else. And uh, anyway, so fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, Mark Miller is on Twitter and he's, he's tearing after these people because they're coming after him now. And they finally found a target that is, too big to cancel, you know, um, and they've gone after other comic book professionals, but I don't think they've ever gone after somebody that was kind of a, a multimedia mogul like Mark Miller. And, uh, you know, they started going after him when he started having some questions about politics. And he was, uh, he said he supported uh, RFK, uh, as do I, by the way. Uh, for anyone wondering, I actually like RFK, but, um, or did like him. I got to look in to see where he's at right now. But, uh, as of a couple, as of a couple months ago, I actually did like RFK quite a bit, but, uh, you know, how dare he, how dare he, you know, support that, that Kennedy that makes you all right, <laughs> you know, cause the guy's got some questions about vaccines and stuff like that. Right. So that kind of, I think started it. And then he started to see, uh, just how, crazy these people actually are. And look, we've been dealing with this off and on. We get it from multiple sides, not just comics. Actually, the I'll be honest, the comic book people are the tamest. The ones you really have to watch out for are the animation people. And they do sort of, 
you know, on the Venn diagram, there are groups of these people that, you know, kind of just form these like cancel culture mobs and they go around, they try to find people they think they can cancel and they think they can manipulate the social media algorithms to be like, oh my God, this is the worst person ever. And I, I have to wonder if guys like, you know, Vic Mignogna would have been canceled current year with Elon Musk being in charge of, of Twitter, because I think the perceived outrage was much, much larger. It was disproportionate with the actual outrage. And uh, I think these people are very good at manipulating the algorithm and make it look like, you know, we're going to get this hashtag trending and we're going to get this person canceled. And a lot of this comes from, you know, stand culture. They learned a few tricks from K-pop stands, you know, and, and there is some, some crossover on the, uh, the crazy Venn diagram. Anyway, Mark Miller, not having it. And it started to attract a lot of attention outside of comics. We've got Grums here saying that, uh, he's very, uh, very pleased with watching, uh, Mark Miller take these people to task. And I think the mask has, has fallen off. What, what really, uh, got Mark Miller into this was a retailer. Uh, a comic book retailer, Glenn O'Leary, I think his name was, who went off on a bit of a rant. We covered that before, Geeky and I, about uh, how so many modern writers are just using comics um, as sort of their own fanfic. They're they're taking established characters and making them self-inserts and putting them into their own fanfics. And then they're shocked when the readers don't respond to that because they want to read stories about Peter Parker, not, not you as Peter Parker or Steve Rogers, not you as Steve Rogers. And you said, I can't sell this stuff. This is a guy who's had a comic shop for like 30 years. And he's had a YouTube channel for years and he talks about comics all the time. He knows what he's talking about. Well, they went after him. Very mild criticism, not political at all. They went after him and then Mark Miller stepped in and uh, coined the term cancel pigs that these people aren't just, uh, you know, uh, activists or whatever. They're canceled pigs. They're not even human. They're pigs. They're canceled pigs, and they need to be canceled. And I think now the tide seems to be turning because I think that there are editors and publishers out there who are starting to see that, oh, my God, we've been listening to the wrong people for years. And I'm not saying you have to agree with everything that everybody on YouTube says. I'm not saying that you have to agree with that. I'm not saying you have to like, you know, throw up the comics gate flag or anything like that. They're going to call you that even if you're not. I've never been on a comics gate live stream. I've ne I don't think I've ever been on Ethan's show. I know him somewhat, but they still consider us comics gate. You know, if you're not comics gate, you're comics gate adjacent. You're comics gate adjacent because you know a couple of people in Comics Gate, or maybe you've associated with a couple of people in Comics Gate, and you're critical of the mainstream comic book industry. For the most part, we pretty much stick to ourselves. It doesn't matter. You know, Mark Miller's like in a totally different league than most of these people, and they're still coming after him. It's not going to go very well for them, though. I mean, I, I could totally see them trying to get him canceled from Netflix, but, you know, this is the same Netflix that backed Dave Chappelle, so I don't think they're going to get very far. You know, in my opinion, I don't think, I don't think they're going to get very far. They're going to look at the sales numbers. They're going to look at the numbers and they're going to be like, yeah, no, we're good. Uh, we're good. We're going to keep them, you know, whatever. Good luck with that. And I think that, uh, this is going to change things. I think what is going to happen is that people are going to take note of who's been trying to cancel creators for wrong thing. And they're going to make lists of their own. And they're going to be like, yeah, let's never work with these people. In fact, I'm starting to see this now. I mean, again, I'm not hyper into this whole thing. We cover comics occasionally, but I'm starting to see a lot of the people that were on these lists not getting work at publishers because they're like, oh my God, they're, they're going to hold us hostage. They're going to bitch about, you know, uh, payment or they're going to bitch about politics or whatever. They're going to try to get us canceled if we don't do what they want. And a lot of times it happens. A lot of times these people turn on their publishers, uh, turn on their collaborators. You know, you can go out there and find the list for yourself. I'm not going to put that uh, up. But if you go out to uh, bleedingfool.com and you look for Whisper Network, you'll see the uh, list of people that have been causing issues. So let's look at uh, what what Mark Miller actually said, and let's look at the the uh, conversation around it. Miller said they have no power. I spoke to one of DC's biggest writers. At the weekend, on the weekend, at the weekend. And he told me he's lived in fear of them for years. That's true. A lot of people didn't jump into this situation. I think the reason big creators like Todd McFarlane just stay out of 
comics discussion for the most part altogether is because of this. They don't know what they can say. They've tried canceling Rob Liefeld before. And Rob, in a lot of ways, agrees with, or I thought he agreed with some of the politics of these people, but it doesn't matter. He's problematic. He doesn't agree 100%. You know, he's got to go. Um, but he said, I couldn't emphasize, this is Mark Miller, I couldn't emphasize this hard enough. Cancel pigs hurt people for sport because they're damaged personalities. You must never take them seriously. Uh, that is actually true. Uh, they are, most of them, 99% of the time, if you look into them, and you, and you do some digging into who they are, what they've done, where they've been, you're going to find, I bl- and I'm not being facetious, I'm not making fun, I'm saying you're going to find like legit mental illness. You're going to find a lot of issues. And I think the way that these people, you know, just armchair psychiatrists, I think that the way they feel better about themselves is if they go attack other people. Or in their mind, they think if they take out the competition, they're going to get something. They're going to get a gig. They're going to get, you know, Batman or whatever. Like we could just get rid of, you know, Scott Snyder, get him out of the way. I get to, I get to write and draw Batman. You know, if we put some pressure on this editor and tell everybody this editor is a racist, well, he's going to hire me and he's going to put me on, you know, X-Men or something. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, and in some cases it's worked, but it's, it's come at the detriment of the, uh, the comic book industry. Everything's collapsing now. So he keeps going on. They have zero power over creators. But writers and editors have made the mistake of trying to appease them for the past seven years. You cannot appease them. You can't. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you agree with them 99%. They will find a reason to cancel you if they think you're a threat. And you don't even have to be against them. You just have to be in their way. Or they're just really bored that day and they need a new target. You know what I'm saying? They live to cancel you. Cancel pigs is very appropriate. If you want to get biblical and you talk about uh, Jesus driving demons uh, out of men and, and sending them into pigs and the pigs are self-destructive and they, they off themselves because these demons have to destroy something. And I'm not trying to wax philosophical or religion or anything like that. I'm just saying there is a story in the Bible about uh, pigs being self-destructive, demon infested pigs being self-destructive. And these people are very self-destructive, but they want to take as many people with them as they possibly can, you know, and that's the sad thing. And at some point you have to just cut them off, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, a lot of these people would not have been allowed in the industry. Like for a number of reasons, it would have been like, yeah, you know what? You're not good enough. Uh, you obviously have mental issues, you're a backstabber, you're a gossip, you know, whatever. There, you wouldn't have been allowed in the industry. And now, not only are they allowed in the industry, they've been allowed to have sway over the industry. And a lot of them don't actually work on books much. They basically are like social media parasites, personalities that seem to have all this influence because comic book people don't want to have to confront them. They think that they're going to be left alone. It's just like tabletop. You know, we've talked about tabletop. There are these, these older guys out there just working on their tabletop system, just doing their thing. Next thing you know, Twitter's after you and calling you a racist and they don't want to fight back. So they bend the knee because they're like, I don't want the hassle. You know, I'm 58 years old. I'm just making my tabletop game or I'm drawing my comic book or whatever. I don't want the hassle of having to deal with these people. If I just give them what they want, or just nod in agreement or whatever, they'll pass me over and leave me alone. All you've done is buy yourself a little more time because eventually they're going to come for you too. They're going to eat everybody. They're going to destroy everybody that they think is competition or they don't like or whatever. You know, you might've looked at them the wrong way 15 years ago at a convention and they hate you and they're going to find a way to make you pay. They're just going to eat you last. They're going to come for you last. But they're absolutely positively, because they're destructive by their nature, they are going to come for you eventually. You've just bought yourself a little more time. And I think some of these people thought, well, if I can just make it to retirement, I'll put up with these people until uh, until I make it to retirement. But uh, yeah, in a lot of cases, they're coming for you now. It doesn't matter. I mean, look at, God, look at what what's happened with like Chuck Dixon, uh, Bill Willingham. I mean, all these... these uh, Older guys with very distinguished careers, if these people had their way, they would not be working at all. They would not be making money at all. They'd be out in their ass. They'd be living in a cardboard box somewhere. 
And then they would drive by and they'd probably piss on the cardboard box and light it on fire just because they're, th they're that vindictive. That's assuming they can buy a car. That's assuming they have enough money to buy a car, but I digress. Anyway, they have zero power. <laughs> you know, they've been trying to appease them for, for the past seven years. It's been uh, fiscal suicide as they really don't read comics. We'll discuss with retailers. We'll discuss with retailers on my live stream tomorrow night. So apparently he did a live stream about it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, I love this. I don't know if this was Yellow Flash did this or who did this, but this is uh, this is fantastic. This is a cancel pig right there. I might use that in my thumbnail. Um, this all sounds like slightly paranoid, equal and opposite tribalism, but maybe I just don't know who or what you're talking about. Well, there's a list. Bleedingfool.com. You can find that list. Uh, Mark, they do have power if you aren't rich. Uh, to some degree. To some degree. Cancel pigs. Their damaged personalities is a good way of looking at them. That's actually being very, oh, hey, I got tagged in. It stops when they start getting sued. That's true. It started to die down a little bit when Mark Wade got sued. And then after the settlement, it started up again. Basically, every time there's major upheaval and they realize that they're losing control, they flip out. And apparently, they're, they're flipping out now. Let's see. Trending. Cancel pigs is trending. Let's see what's going on here. Um, umbrella guy, cancel pigs trends as Mark Miller takes a wrecking ball to the morons trying to harm him. Uh, Billy Tucci cancel pigs is trending. Good. Yes. I think, oh yeah, he got in trouble. I forgot about that. He got in trouble for saying cheers, bud to Ethan Van Skyver, Ethan Van Skyver, who had, you know, regardless of what you think about his hot takes on YouTube, the guy had a pretty long career at DC comics and he was a well-respected artist for a number of years and he made more money than a lot of these people will ever see. And he continues to make money, but they can't stand it. They can't stand it. They can't stand it. Cancel pigs. Uh, Penny Parker, journalist. This, Penny Parker is the one who put the list together, the Whisper Network. There are two separate conversations going on in comics right now. Business owners, creators, and fans discussing how to improve sales. And cancel pigs screaming about skin color and gender and stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it's they're going to get canceled. They're absolutely going to get canceled, too. Um, this is kind of funny stuff, guys. I mean, it, look, the day had to come and it got Rich Johnson. Um, I'm against cancellation that have been consistent and people on that list have tried to cancel me. That is actually true. I will give Rich Johnson that actually there are people on this list that have tried to cancel Rich Johnson. Hi, McDonald does not like Rich Johnston very much, but, uh, a lot of these people, they are the tastemakers in comics and they're kind of getting theirs. You know, ain't nobody touching your ass with a 12 foot pole now that you've thrown in with EVS's cold of morons. He's not part of EVS's cold of morons. Is that what that's called? Trademark? Are we going to trademark that? Uh, and he's got a Netflix deal. So I think he's fine. Anyway, this is going to continue and uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch, guys. I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later.